and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 45th episode, we're heading off to the oh so cool Casbah Food Court located in Tokyo Disney Sea. To get to the Casbah Food Court, start off in Tokyo Disney Sea's Mediterranean Harbor. Head straight on in towards the water. Veer to your right and make your way around the water. Head up the stairs and turn left so that you can keep the water on your left side and Mount Prometheus on your right. Speaking of Mount Prometheus, turn right and head into its caldera. Veer right to make your way around this water feature as well, passing by the Volcana restaurant on your right before turning right before you reach the Nautilus Gifts. Head through this passageway and emerge on the other side to see the Mermaid Lagoon and Arabian Coast Kingdoms both appear in front of you. Continue on keeping to your right and walk down this pathway, ignoring the bridges over to Mermaid Lagoon, in favor of angling towards the Arabian Coast. Once you reach the Arabian Coast main entrance, turn right and head on in. Head down the stairs and into the beautiful courtyard, at which point Veer left. In the left-hand corner of the courtyard, you'll find the Casbah Food Court. Casbah Food Court is a counter-service eatery with both indoor and outdoor seating. The main lobby where you do your ordering is decorated to look like an outdoor market, with rugs hanging from bare rafters, exposed rickwork, hanging pots, pans, rugs, lanterns, plates, and other goods. There are four individual stalls that you can order from, each with their own theme and decoration. But regardless of which counter you order at, the menu is exactly the same. Once you've got your food, you can make your way into their intricately decorated dining rooms. Everything at the Casbah Food Court is decorated, from the chairs to the tables, all the way up to the ceiling and columns. No matter where you look, there's always something to see at the Casbah Food Court. Hi! Uh, this Hello. is my friend. <laughs> she, this is Lee. Yep. Uh, she's joining me all the way from New Zealand. You heard her lovely voice in our previous uh, Blue Bayou yep. experience. Uh, and this time we actually have a table that we can both sit on the same side as. So, neat. And well lit. And well lit. <laughs> unlike last time. Uh, so we are at the Casbah, the Casbah, what's the full name? Food Court. <laughs> Casbah Food Court. We got there. Uh, I have the uh, chicken curry. Uh, I, I got it spicy, so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, and a mango lassi, which will help with the spicy. And uh, mango cake dessert, which looks Very like cute. a nice little Taj Mahal looking thing. What did you get? Um, I got the six star sample platter. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the beef, the chicken, and the shrimp options mm -hmm. with the rice and naan. Also, mango lassi. Yay. Because you can't do Indian food without mango lassi. You really can. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and a ketchup of the other really pretty dessert. Yeah. Which I'll make for you. It's just a coconut custard. I'm putting my white skin behind oh, it so you can <laughs> see the little, pretty little uh, lamb. Um, which is it is. Uh, I wanted this because of the <laughs> lamp, but I'm not a big fan of pudding. So I'll, I'll tell you, maybe we can trade. I'll take yeah. one towel, you take a lamp. We'll, we'll, we're going to share <laughs> desserts. All right, so I'm hungry. Let's Lamb dig in. Spoon. No, you may not. No spoons for you. They gave us the giant spoons as well oh, in case we want them. Well, I don't we're going to have fun for dessert anyway, so... That's probably what the smaller spoon is for, <laughs> is for dessert. Uh, that's not gonna happen right now, I can tell you that already. Oh, yeah, sure, cheers. Why not? Yay. I'm be terribly uncouth and just pour my curry onto my rice. Mmm. Yeah. That's delicious. What are you starting with? I actually tried a bit of both. A little bit of naan. They're all very, very, very good. If you've got chunk of heat in them, which I don't mind at all. I did say spicy. That might have applied yes. to both of our orders. <laughs> good. I was going to ask if they had an option. I was thinking, well, I'll just see what I get. Yeah. We got here about 11 o'clock, and we were able to walk in. It's now 11.30, and the line is out the door. 
they're directing in very well, but it's just... I could see the line transforming as I was sitting and waiting. Just... Oof. Yeah, I was, I was at the counter doing the ordering and she was reserving our table and resting our pizzas. Mm. Blue Bayou set your expectations that low. <laughs> Say that again. Blue Bayou is very tasty. Um, again, I think, yeah, price versus portion size. Yeah. And saying this curry, I know it's very filling. So, good things and it's a good price. So. Your set was actually more expensive mm. than mine. Yeah, because I had the free options, but it wasn't charged. It's like 200 yen more, wasn't it? Um, yours is 1020 and mine is 780. Mm. I think it's not too bad for getting free samples. Yeah. Mm. Let me try all of them. The mango lassie is also more expensive than just yeah, the straight up lassie. Which I'm guessing is just going to be yogurt flavor. And, yeah. And not on the menu for some reason. Really? Yeah, like they have it in, in the, the plastic food menu, but the actual... On the counter? Um, like the menu that they have behind the counter, they only have the lassie men, uh, mentioned and not the mango lassie. Which I'm tempted to try, but I love mango lassie. Me too. <laughs> but it's just, this mango lassie, I'm going to order it. That's the spice treaty. Not bad. I'm a spice weenie, and so far this is not, this is not, not nothing. Nope, Agrabah is beautiful. I really do think it's the most beautiful part of this park. Yeah, so we started in Mediterranean Harbor. Yep. We went into uh, the, Mount, the Mount Prometheus Caldera. Yep. And then we went to Ariel's Grotto, the Mermaid Lagoon. And now we're in Agrabah. The thing is, every time we go into something, it's like, wow, look at this, wow, look at that, wow, look at that. And each section we're going to is just getting better. <laughs> it's like, no, this is stunning. This, this is beautiful. I think. Then we go up to the like, oh, look at that. <laughs> so I thought I'd love to see it. This one's like, wow, I'm going to throw it in the other. Anyway, it was like, yeah, it's like, this is very Disney, and I love it. But then coming here, it's like, there's detail packed everywhere. And it's wonderful. And Immersive. It's so immersive. Um, I'm sure they're pumping smells through. Oh, they the, absolutely are. Through That's the well, yeah. That pumping smells into various parts of the park is a Disney classic technique. They do that at all the parks. The um, food court ordering area is stunning here as well. All the rafters are decorated. And beautiful. I think one of the reasons why I prefer Agrabah. I know that's not what it's called, but I'm going to keep calling yeah, it that. It's easy to remember. <laughs> um, Why well, I prefer it over uh, the Mermaid Lagoon uh, is because Ariel's Grotto has a very definite ceiling and walls to it. Oh, yeah. Whereas this... Feels like part of the world. It really does feel like... You know, if you turn, there are certain places you can stand in here where Agrabah is all you can see, mm. and it really does feel immersive. That sets me something really nice about this park. That, um, Disney's got those very clear cut areas. You tell it's for your turn door, your adventure, lay, uh, adventure section, all the sections. This one, it feels very natural to walk into the Mediterranean area, walk under a cave, oh, you're in a new land, walk back out. It's, Clear cut, but it still feels forever. Still, not like oh, yeah, we're just going to cut this park here and it's side A, side B. This is oh, this hill, could, this cliff can is this in three different areas? So the curry did end up having a little bit of heat to it, but not a lot. If that is the spicy curry, I I can't imagine what the not spicy, not yeah. spicy, probably one would imagine. Is, is advertised. <laughs> Go figure, yeah, as labeled on tin. But I, as I said, I'm a spice weenie, and I was pretty much fine. I was happy to have my mango lassie, but if I hadn't have had it, I would have been fine too. I'm gonna try my mango cake. This is not a mango cake. <laughs> That's pretty. Look at the three little pretty, pretty red dots. There's one, there's one, two, and a third one there. It's just so pretty. Yeah, I got I got edible chocolate uh, silver sprinkles. Looks like a meringue or something as well on top. I'm a sweet whipped cream. 
That's white chocolate mixed with milk chocolate. Here, put, put it up against the yellow wall so that they can see it. There you go. Yeah. Eat your pudding. <laughs> Don't beat your pudding. Eat your pudding. Child. <laughs> How is? Punch in the mouth of coconut. Ooh. <laughs> in the good way. So apparently in New Zealand, they don't just sweeten their whipped cream no, automatically. No, it's only just whipped cream without any sugar I have never noticed anything unusual about the whipped cream. It has always been exactly as I expected it. But if you're coming from New Zealand, <laughs> be aware. All right. So we are going to finish up our little desserts. And then we're going to move on to the next place, uh, which is a secret for you for now, but I think I know what it is. <laughs> We made our way home from the Casbah. Now to review. Service is a two out of five. Now, once again, this does not go on the workers. Every single worker that I saw was working their hardest and moving people as efficiently as possible through the line. That said, I ended up waiting 30 minutes in line to order. Now, we specifically got there early so that we wouldn't have to wait in line. I know this location typically has a line that goes out the door, and I wanted to avoid that if at all possible. That said, we got there early to the point where we were actually able to walk almost up to the counter first thing, and I still had to wait 30 minutes in line. What made this wait even more frustrating was there was an entire other counter area that wasn't open while we were there. There was no one working it. And visually, like I said, that was frustrating because it was very much a case of what well, we could go through that line, but there's no one there. Now, this, as I said, isn't on the workers. It's more on management. But my friend Lee actually pointed out something that I had never considered before, which is maybe the reason why they keep us in line so long is to try and help control the seating and table arrangements. Uh, so that the you know the, so so that there are tables for everyone to sit at after they order their food. I thought this was a really interesting idea, certainly one that I hadn't considered before. However, when we left, the line had formed into that out the door around the corner sort of situation, and there was one entire dining section that only had one person sitting in it. So I don't know, uh, but I have to give it a two out of five. Sorry. Atmosphere is a five out of five. Again, I cannot praise the Arabian coast enough for its amazing atmosphere. Nothing is not above and beyond what it strictly needs to be. And this atmosphere extends into the Casbah food court. Everything is done up, whether it's chairs, tables, lamps, the ceiling, everything is amazing and immersive. And I love it. I love it. 5 out of 5. Price is a 3 out of 5. What you pay for is what you get, pretty much at this location. While it is true it is a little bit more pricey than some other locations in the park, the portions are, for Japan, relatively large and, what's more, they're very filling. This means that if you get a set meal here, you'll probably skip over the snacks that you might otherwise be buying throughout the day at the park. Three out of five. The food is a four out of five. I really, really enjoyed my curry. It was tender and delicious and I loved it. Meanwhile, the three curry plate was also reported as being very good with the shrimp curry coming in first and the beef curry coming in last. However, coming in last in a set of three curries that are all reported as being delicious still means that it's delicious. It's just that if she had it to do over again, she would get the shrimp curry, whereas I would be happy sticking with the chicken. 
The Mango Lassie was far and away the winner from both of us. We both agreed that that was by far the best thing that either of us ordered. Uh, the cake and pudding were both nothing particularly special. You were more paying for the presentation on those ones, which was admittedly very nice. If I had one complaint to make, it would be that the texture of the rice was a little bit strange. It wasn't the Japanese sticky rice, but it also wasn't the type of rice that I've had at Indian restaurants in the past. It was some sort of weird amalgam of the two, and while it wasn't bad, the texture was a bit of a surprise for me. That said, it was still really good, and I would happily go back, earning this place a 4 out of 5. Overall, this earns the Casbah Food Court an average rating of 3.5 out of 5, which seems pretty good. We'll leave it there. With a 3.5 out of 5, this ties the Casbah Food Court with Boiler Room Bites, the Royal Street Veranda, and the Blue Bayou Restaurant from last time. This is honestly not even a contest to me, though, as it happily slides in above all of these locations, earning it fourth place on the master list. It is reasonably priced, it is good food, and the atmosphere is amazing. Would eat at again happily. Meanwhile, on the counter service list, it faces a similar series of ties and once again comes out on top, earning it third place. Top three, well done! Of those top three, two have amazing atmospheres and two feature curry prominently on the menu. The Casbah Food Court does both. Well done. So, that's it for this week. Unfortunately, next week I'm going to be off again as for a variety of reasons I won't be able to get back to the park in time to film another episode. I'm giving myself a little bit of a buffer so that you'll never have to go more than one week without an episode. That said, come back the week after next if you want to find out where I'll be next. Uh, hint, this place has been on my horizon for a while now. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do. We'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there, links to that in the description box. And I will see you the week after next for another Tokyo Tuesday.